Hello everyone, dear subscribers and viewers of the channel. Vitaly Sokolov is with you. Today we will talk about cross-platform application development in the Embarcadero Delphi environment. In this case, under the Android operating system, but similar development can be carried out under iOS, Linux, macOS and Windows. And before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up and write a comment. You can also provide financial support to the channel, the details are in the description under the video. Thank you all in advance. Many videos on the channel have subtitles, you can enable them by clicking on the gear in the lower right corner of the video, select the subtitles item and select your language. If the video you need does not have subtitles in your language, write about it in the comments under the video. If you don't have Delphi installed, then write Delphi or Embarcadero Delphi in the search bar of your browser. Next, go to the Embarcadero official website, select Delphi Community Edition in the free software menu or by the full version. On the new page, enter your data and click download. An email will be sent to your email containing your key to use Delphi and a link to download it. Download and run the installer. Install the Delphi environment following the instructions. During the installation, we select the installation path, the necessary platforms for which we plan to develop applications, and also enter the product key. You can watch a video review of the Delphi environment on this channel. It describes in detail the process of installing Delphi. If your computer does not have enough space to install the Delphi environment, then you can install the Lazarus IDE or Code Typhoon Studio. They are free and open source programming environments for Object Pascal and allow you to create applications for even more platforms and operating systems. There are videos on these programming environments on this channel. Before you start developing applications for the Android operating system, you need to install the Android SDK and Android NDK, as well as the Java Development Kit, JDK. You can download them in several ways. First way, during the installation of the Embarcadero Delphi environment, at the stage of choosing platforms for development, you need to check the box for Android, in this case, the Android SDK and NDK should be installed along with the development environment. The second way, if Embracadero Delphi is already installed, then you need to run it. Next, select tools from the top menu, and then manage platforms. A new window will open, in which you can check Delphi Android community and click the apply button. The third way, you can download the libraries manually by entering the Android SDK NDK download request in your browser. Next, Go to the official website and download them. After installation, you need to unpack them or install them in a convenient place on your computer, where there is enough space. This can be, for example, from several gigabytes to tens of gigabytes. You also need to install the Java Development Kit, JDK, Library and, just in case, also the Java Virtual Machine. In the search bar of the internet browser, enter the query Java Development Kit, JDK, Download, download it from the official Oracle website. Then we run the installer and install it on the computer, it is very small in size. Next, we write a Java download request and also download and install the Java virtual machine. After the necessary libraries are installed, you need to start the Embarcadero Delphi environment. Then check if the paths to the installed libraries are configured correctly. To do this, go to the top menu tools, options, deployment, SDK Manager. Make sure that there are no exclamation marks to the right of all paths on the SDK, NDK and Java tabs. If they are not there, then the selected paths contain the necessary files and folders. If there are exclamation marks somewhere, then you need to check whether these folders and files exist. By clicking on the button in the form of three dots, you can select new paths. If you check the Android operating system when installing Delphi, then you may already have the Android SDK and NDK installed. But in my case, far from the latest versions of them were installed. And the Java Development Kit, JDK, was not installed at all. In the Android SDK settings, you can save your own versions of the settings and load them back. This may come in handy when working with different versions of Android platforms and can protect you if you forget which paths were originally registered. You can see the working settings for Android SDK, NDK 32 and 64 bits on the screen. Please note that the settings may differ depending on the versions of the SDK, NDK and Android API that you will be working with. For clarity, consider the approximate structure of finding the necessary folders for these libraries. For Android SDK 32-bit and 64-bit, the paths should look something like this. 
The SDK base path line specifies the path to the folder with the Android SDK library of your version. In the zipper line locations line, specify the path to the folder, in which contains the zipperline.exe file. We go into the folder with the Android SDK, find the bullet tools folder there, and then select the folder with the version we plan to work with. And inside it, as a rule, is the file we need. In the Android location line, we must specify the path to the android.bat file. To do this, go to the Android SDK folder, find the tools folder there, it should contain the file we need. In the ADB location line, you need to specify the path to the ADB.exe file, without which Delphi will not be able to see and work normally with your Android device. Attention! The path to this file depends on where the required ADB version of your Android device or Android emulator was installed. If you work through the emulator, then this file should be in the folder with it. The AAPT location line specifies the path to the AAPT.exe file. It is usually located in the folder with the zipperline.exe file of the desired version of build tools. The SDK API level location line specifies the path to the folder with the version of the Android API under which you plan to compile your application. This line determines which versions of Android your future application will be designed for. Usually, folders with Android API versions are located in the Android SDK folder. There we find the platforms folder and in it we simply select the desired API version from those that are installed. If the version you need is not on your computer, next, we will see how they can be installed. Next, go to the tab with Android NDK 32-bit and then 64-bit. In the NDK base path line, specify the path to the folder of the required version of the Android NDK library. In the ARM Linux Android ABILD.exe location line, specify the path to the ARM Linux Android ABILD.exe or LDEXE file. To do this, go to the Android NDK folder of the required version, go to the Toolchains folder, go to the ARM Linux Android ARB folder of the required version, in my case, version 4.9, or the Arch64 Linux Android folder, for the 64-bit version and tab. Next, go to the Pre-Build folder then Windows x86 underscore 64, then the folder with the desired version and bit depth, then the bin folder and specify the desired file in it. In the ARM Linux Android ABI strip.exe location line, specify the path to the ARM Linux Android ARB strip.exe or strip.exe file. This file is located in the same folder as the previous one. In the GDB server location line, specify the path to the GDB server file, which is located in the Android NDK folder, then the pre-built folder, then the Android ARM folder, for the 32-bit version, or Android ARM64, for the 64-bit version, and there the GDB server folder, in which is the file we need. In the NDK API location line, specify the path to the folder with the desired version of Android. Usually, you need to go to the Android NDK folder of the desired version, then go to the Platforms folder and then select the folder with the desired version. If the required version is not available, it will need to be installed. In the C++ Builder NDK Library path line, and in some versions there may also be a Delphi NDK Library path line, you need to specify the paths to the folders of these libraries. You need to go to the Android NDK folder of the desired version, then go to the Platforms folder, then to the folder with the desired Android version, select the folder with the desired bit depth and architecture, then go to it, go to the ERSA folder, and then to the lib folder. Typically, this section specifies more than one path. In the second way, specify the Android NDK folder of the desired version, find the Sources folder in it, go to it, then to the CXXSTL folder, then to the LLVM lib++ or new libs DC++ folder, then to the libs folder and select the folder with the bitness and version we need. For example, for 32 bits, ARM v7a, and for 64 bits select ARM 64 v8a. If you set at least one path incorrectly, this will affect the correct compilation. Most likely, various errors will appear at the compilation stage. To create a cross-platform application, you need to select the menu item file, new, multi-device application in Delphi or select create a new multi-device application, Delphi. Then configure your application already. Select the menu item project, select the item options.
In the window that opens, in the building item, select the Delphi compiler sub-item. In the compiling item, you can configure how your application will be compiled. For example, if you select the all configurations, all platforms item in the target, that is, devices, drop-down list on the right. At the bottom, you can check, generate Android 32-bit and 64-bit binaries, Amiibi, V7A plus ARM64, V8A, or this item can be called, generate Android app bundle, ARM plus ARM64. In this case, you will be able to compile applications for the Android Play market. And on the application tab, you can configure your future application. For example, on the icons tab, you can set icon images of different sizes in your application to be displayed on different operating systems. For the Android operating system, icons are required. On the orientation tab, you can enable or disable the available orientations, rotations, of your application when displayed on smartphones, tablets, and so on. On the services tab, you can connect various services, for example, you can connect advertising. On the uses tab permission sets the permissions for your application on the device. For example, you can give your application access to calls, camera, microphone, internet, and so on. You can familiarize yourself with all the tabs in more detail using the online documentation on the Embarcadero website. And if you are creating an application for the Android Play market, then you need to go to the deployment tab in the settings and select the provisioning item. In the build type section, select Android 32-bit or 64-bit application store. You need to fill in the information in the fields that appear manually and save the data in the key store extension. Or download the key and data from the Android Play console developer account. Unsigned apps are not allowed in the store. All your applications must be signed in the same way, otherwise they will not be admitted to the marketplace. To compile applications for Android, you need some real device based on the Android operating system. It can be a mobile phone, smartphone, tablet, or others. Or you can install and configure an Android emulator on your computer, create the desired device in it and compile your applications on it. If you connect your real device in order to compile through it, then you need to go to the settings of your mobile phone, tablet, turn on the developer mode for it by clicking about 7 times on the build number item. Then go to the menu item for developers and there enable the option USB debug, USB debugging. Then you need to install ADB, Android debug bridge, of your device. It is a programming tool used for debugging Android devices. Without it, the Delphi programming environment may not see the Android device and cannot access it. On some phones, when connecting to a computer, you need to select the correct mode so that the phone is defined as a mini flash drive, where ADB will lie. You can also download it from the internet. In the browser line, write the model of your phone or tablet and add ADB download. Also, when debugging compiling from an Android computer or laptop for the first time, the device may request permission to debug. Check the Always allow debugging from this computer box and click OK. If everything is done correctly, then when you connect the phone to the computer in normal charging mode, in Delphi at the top, near the selected operating system and on the right in target platforms in the target subsection, your device should appear among the devices available for compilation. Using a real Android device allows you to quickly compile applications for Android and not suffer from long setup. But at the same time, with each compilation, the application will be transferred to your device, installed on it and then launched. Which is not always convenient. This clogs the device's memory, and also gradually kills your device and its memory. Therefore, I would not recommend using this compilation method often. For example, it can be used for some intermediate compilations or the final release compilation. For more convenience, I would advise using an Android emulator. But you will have to suffer a little with its installation and configuration. For Delphi, both a regular AVD, Android Virtual Device, Emulator and Nox Emulator are suitable. It was not possible to work with the Memu Emulator, the Delphi environment did not see it. All other emulators need to be tested and checked whether they will work or not. Attention, the Android Emulator only supports 64-bit versions of Windows and requires at least 4GB of free RAM for fast and smooth operation. In order to use the standard AVD emulator that is built into the Android SDK, you need to go to the Android SDK folder. If you are using the version that was installed with Delphi, its path can be found through the Settings Tools, Options, Deployment, SDK Manager. If you installed the Android SDK manually, then go to where the installation went. Go to the Android SDK folder and run the SDK Manager EXE. In the window that opens, we can see which versions of which packages we have installed.
If everything you need is already installed there, then you can skip this step, and if you still need to install and configure, then do this. The version of the SDK platform tool is one of the most important. To avoid problems when creating applications for new versions of Android, it is advisable to install the newest version or use the one that comes with Delphi, as the Android SDK is already configured there. The folders are further divided into different Android API versions. Each version is responsible for different versions of the Android operating system. On the internet, you can find out which version of the API is responsible for which Android system. It is not necessary to install all files from the selected Android API. You need to install the SDK platform and the system image file of the processor you need, Intel Atom or ARM. When programming on a computer with an AMD processor, I would advise to choose ARM images. When we have set the required marks, we move to the very bottom and in the extra section we put a check mark in front of Google USB driver, so that we can access the Android emulator an Intel x86 emulator accelerator, HAXM installer, to work with Intel processors. When all the marks are affixed, click the install packages button. After that, click on the list of files on the left and put the accept license mark at the bottom. When all the green marks are on the left, click on the install button and wait until everything is downloaded and installed. Attention, this can take quite a long time, and it can also take up gigabytes of memory on your hard drive. Make sure you have enough space. The older versions of the Android API you use, the less space they will take up. But keep in mind that some older versions of the API are not supported on the Google Play Marketplace, which means you will not be able to trade them there. If you constantly get installation errors and all Android API versions are not displayed, you may not have access to Google servers. Check your internet connection. If there is internet, then you can try installing a VPN application that will allow you to bypass the blocking of the internet provider, if such is enabled. Another option is to have someone download the files you need and then give them to you. You download and install them or put them in the right place. When all packages are installed, go to the menu items tools, manage AVDs. In the window that opens, we will create an Android device whose work will be emulated. That is, the program will try to copy the operation of this device and impersonate it for other applications. If a device was created and became unnecessary, you can delete it by clicking on it and pressing the delete button on the right. To create a new device, click the Create button. In the new window that opens, in the AVD Name section, we come up with and set a name for our device. In the Device section, we select which device we will emulate in particular, what screen size will be and what HDPI. DPI is the number of dots, pixels, per inch. 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. This is the so-called density. The following types of density are distinguished. You see them on the screen. The higher the density, the smaller the pixels and the sharper the image and the higher the screen resolution. In the target section, select which version of the Android operating system the device will run on. By the way, here you can see for which version of Android which version of the API is needed. In the CPU ABI section, select the processor for our device. You will only have access to those processors, images that you downloaded for the selected API version. Keyboard section allows you to enable or disable the hardware keyboard on the device. The skin section affects the appearance of our emulated device. Sections front and back camera are responsible for the presence on the device of the front and rear cameras for photo and video shooting. The memory options section is responsible for the amount of memory allocated for the device. It can be set automatically or you can set it manually. RAM is random access memory. VM heap this is the so-called heap. That is, dynamically allocated memory for one instance of applications by our virtual machine, for example, the values backslash U200B backslash U200 BOF32 or 512. The larger the number, the more memory will be allocated and the faster the application should work, because it will have more memory. It's convenient to add memory to quickly test applications, but when compiling it is recommended to set the actual amount of memory that is installed on the Android devices that your application targets as a standard. Then it will be seen whether he has enough memory for this and whether the application will work normally on them. The internal storage section is responsible for the size of the device's internal memory, on which we can install our application. We won't need a lot of such memory if our application takes up little memory. The size is specified in megabytes. The SD card section is responsible for the amount of additional memory. 
the role of which is usually played by flash memory. It is also recommended to set the use host GPU option to use hardware graphics acceleration. When checked, the graphics should run faster and smoother. If the snapshot section is checked, then the emulator will remember its state until it is turned off. This is a snapshot of the system that boots up in the same way that an operating system goes to sleep and then wakes up. But for you and me it is of little interest. We expose the most suitable options for us and press the OK button. We are waiting for the device to be created. Before starting the emulator, I would advise you to enable virtualization technology in the BIOS of your motherboard, if the motherboard supports it, and enable its elements in the operating system. Without virtualization, the emulator can run much slower it and with possible lags, or may refuse to work at all. Problems can also arise if you have a weak computer, a slow hard drive or IAM, the motherboard does not support virtualization, and so on. The Android emulator may load indefinitely on some computers. In this case, you can try changing the emulator settings to those that work, as well as changing the Android version. If the emulator refuses to work anyway, you can download third-party Android emulators or connect your mobile phone or tablet with a licensed version of the Android operating system as a compilation device. To enable virtualization in the BIOS, you need to press the desired key when turning on the computer, on different motherboards, in different ways, for example, F2, Delete, Escape or others. In the BIOS, find the item that is responsible for this and enable it. In different versions of the BIOS, this item may be called differently and located in different places. Therefore, read the name of your motherboard and search the internet for information on whether it supports virtualization, how to get into its BIOS settings and how to enable virtualization technology. After turning on, press the F10 key to save the settings and reboot. If required to enter a letter, enter the letter Y and press enter. After turning on the computer, you need to enable the necessary virtualization elements through the settings. I do this on Windows 10, but you can find information on your version of the operating system. You may encounter many bugs and problems. You can see some possible solutions on the screen. If the solution you need is not on the screen or the advice did not help, ask your questions on the forums, channels, sites and groups that are dedicated to Delphi. This channel has a video about the popularity of Pascal, Delphi and Lazarus in social networks. There you can find many useful groups, channels and sites. It's time to launch our created Android device. Click on the start button on the right. At this stage, a number of errors may appear. Depending on the text of the error and its possible solutions will be different. It is also possible to run the emulator endlessly. If the launch went well, then you need to enable USB debugging on this device, just as we would do on a real Android device. You need to go to the Android settings, enable its developer mode by clicking about 7 times on the build number item. Then go to the menu item for developers and there enable the option USB debug, USB debugging. After that, we restart both the Android device and the Delphi environment. If there were no problems and Delphi saw this device, then you can start developing. On subsequent launches of the emulator, you will need to go to the Android SDK folder, then to the Android SDK Manager folder and in the Tools folder, launch the emulator or run the AVD Manager from the Android SDK folder. Or you can bring the shortcut of the EXE file to the desktop. To do this, right-click on the emulator and select Send, and then to the desktop. To make it even easier to launch the emulator, you can add a menu item to Delphi. We go to the Tools menu item, then select the Configure Tools item, press the ADD button, that is, add, write a name for our new menu item, for example AVD. And we point the way to it. In my case, it's the Android SDK folder, then AVD Manager. Then click OK. Now in the menu item tools there is a sub-item AVD. If you are not satisfied with the speed and capabilities of the standard Android emulator, you can install another one. But not all of them are supported by the Delphi environment. Of the proven ones, you can install the Nox emulator. In the search bar of the browser, write Nox Player Download. Go to its official website, select the language you like and download it. After downloading, run the downloaded file. At the bottom left, you need to agree to the license agreement, and on the right, you can click the configure button and select the path to install the emulator. Then click the install button. You may be prompted to install some other software, this is an advertisement. You can click the reject button and the installation process will begin.
Once the application is installed, it can be launched. If a message appears at startup stating that you need to disable Hyper-V or other services, agree to this and click disable. After that, you may need to restart your computer. Along with the emulator, the Nox Assistant application is installed. By running it, you can create, configure, and delete Android devices that Nox will emulate. You can set up a 32 or 64-bit Android system, as well as select its version. This is important for future compilation on it. After starting the emulator, you need to go to the settings of the emulator window in the form of a gear. Go to the general tab and check the root box. Then go to the Android system and go to its settings by clicking on them. Scroll to the very bottom and go to the menu item, about tablet or about phone. Find the USB debugging menu item and enable it. If you do not have this item, click about seven times on the build number menu item to obtain developer rights. Then enable USB debugging. After that, you need to restart the Nox emulator and the Delphi environment if everything went well. Delphi in the target section of the multi-device application should see a device that emulates Nox. If the device does not appear there, go to Delphi settings. Select the tools menu item, select the options item, go to the deployment tab and go to the SDK manager tab. In the ADB location line, you need to change the path to the adb.exe file, which is located in the Nox emulator folder. Since ADB versions of other emulators and Android devices may not match each other. After your real or emulated Android device is set up, you can start developing the application. For example, I'll just throw a button component on the form and try to compile it on both emulators. For the compilation to succeed, see if the correct application type is selected in build configurations. In order to activate the required item on the right, you need to double click on this item with the left mouse button or right click on it and select the activate item in the context menu that appears. If debug is selected and it's in bold, the application will be compiled into the debug folder. Project optimization is disabled, but debugging is enabled, certain syntax options are enabled. If the release item is selected, in this case the application is created with less additional information and the application is being prepared for release, that is, it is being prepared for distribution to other users. For example, no symbolic debug information is generated and no code is generated for trace and assert calls. The generated executable contains no debug information, is smaller, and runs faster than an application built using the debug configuration. Check if the platform is correct and its bitness is set to the right in the target platform section, it should be in bold. The target subsection should display an Android device, it must be connected and turned on. In the configuration subsection, if the development item is selected, a regular test app application will be created. And if the application store item is selected, a signed APK or AAB application will be created. You can sign your application by going to the project dash, options dash, deployment dash, provisioning menu and selecting the release configuration, Android 64-bit platform item in the target section. And in the build type section, select Android 64-bit application store. The next step is to fill in the key data for the store. To create an Android app bundle, AAB, application, you need to compile it, then select the project menu item, click the build project or build all projects button, and then click the deploy button to build the AAB file. In this deploy list, you can add files that need to be packaged with our application, for example, music, sounds, images, and so on. Make sure the following items are selected to compile on the right, Android 64-bit operating system, application for the application store, the correct compilation device is selected and it is enabled and available. Some of the errors that may occur when Delphi works with development for the Android operating system and possible solutions you can see on the screen. When migrating between different versions of Delphi, you may need to update the libraries for your project. To do this, on the right, right-click on the Libraries item and click on the Revert System Files to default item. If the compilation was successful, after a short time you will see the running application on your Android device or emulator. To close the application on the device after testing it, you can use the button in the form of a square, this will open a menu with running applications. We close our application by clicking on the button in the form of a trash can, the clear all button, or by dragging the window to the side. If you continue to get errors when building or compiling the application, read the error code and text and translate them into your language. 
If the reason is still not clear, search the internet for information about the code and text of your error. The Embarcadero website has a page with a list of errors and their descriptions. For extended information about the error, go to Delphi at the bottom of the output tab, copy the error code from there. Then you can ask a question about your mistake on programming forums or in groups on social networks. Also, keep in mind that in order to compile an Android application for 64-bit, it is necessary that the Android device has both a 64-bit processor and a 64-bit operating system. This can be checked using the information and documentation for your Android device model, or using dedicated apps such as AIDA64. There are a number of models in which the bitness of the processor and the operating systems do not match. If the processor or operating system does not have 64-bit support, your application may compile and build with errors. That's all for me. A lot of time was spent on this video, so I ask you to support it with a thumbs up and a comment. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The channel also needs your financial help. You can support the channel financially using the details in the description under the video, as well as in the header on the main page of the channel, in the links section at the top. Your support can extend the life of the channel, allow you to spend more time creating useful videos, and can also keep the content free. Without profit, it will be difficult for the channel to exist in the future. Thank you all in advance. Vitaly Sokolov was with you. See you in the next videos.